Welcome back. Yes, you're watching The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Political activities uh, ahead of the 2023 general elections in Nigeria are in full swing and the internal processes within the political parties are taking shape. Ward and local government congresses, as well as the national convention, were held by the two leading political parties, setting the stage for the party primaries in according, accordance with the schedule of the election released by the Independent National Electoral Commission. And this is despite calls for time, more time, by the Inter-Party Advisory Committee. Amidst the internal campaigns by aspirants in the various political parties, the role and influence of the party delegate has come to the fore. From what has been observed, they can make or mar. Now, joining us to look at the politics of party primaries and delegates is political analyst Mande Ubani. Good morning to you, Dr. Ubani. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, the, the Nigerian political delegate is, is quite powerful. Um, some have said that we need to have a, a reform, reform of our, the way we run our politics, a sort of new day um, and uh, a change in the political system in the country. Now, what are your thoughts on this aspiration vis-a-vis -vis the political culture in our leading political parties today? Well, the... The issue at hand is that uh, we are now on the throes of uh, getting to the election, the general election of 2023, and the political parties are uh, in the trenches in order to actually uh, elect the primary candidates that will now face uh, the citizens or, or the electorate in 2023. And we are seeing a lot of happenings in the political scene uh, we've seen what is going on within the PDP. Uh, some major stakeholders, you know, who actually contestants are, are, are probably, probably withdrawing uh, from the political scene. Uh, and that stems from the fact of this issue of delegates. Uh, who controls the delegates actually control the entire vote and then eventually will uh, determine who emerges uh, and out all the cadre. You know, because we are going to have uh, the uh, State House of Assembly, the uh, the Federal House of Reps and Senate, and gubernatorial, and of course the presidential. Uh, so whoever is in charge of these all important delegates, he actually will determine uh, the emergence of the primary candidates at the primary level. And so, it is uh, the the problem is that we are we are yet to get it right, because this is a fundamental aspect of our electoral journey, electoral process. If we don't get the kind of people that we require that will face the national election, if the wrong candidates are elected by this delegate, all important delegates, who obviously seems that most of them are compromised because they were still in a, pro in a big problem as a nation. We are still in a very big, uh, we have not made any advancement in terms of political culture. We have not made any advancement in terms of even our democracy. You know, because if the wrong persons emerge, you have no choice than to elect those wrong persons at the national election. And the wrong persons keep on emerging. Nigeria remains retarded because leadership is key. We can't move forward without the kind of leadership that can drive Nigeria in the 21st century. So, uh, honestly, for what I'm seeing, I don't think we have made any, any improvement at all in our political culture. We have not made any improvement in our political system. And our democracy, I must tell you, is clearly in period. Mm. So, um, Dr. Mondo Bani, uh, at what point do we now say that, you know, the Electoral Act, a lot of people had said that, you know, the Electoral Act having the president assent to it and not assent to it, I mean, it would change the dynamics of our political, you know, process. And uh, people actually had hope that in 2023, I don't know if the hope is still there, that it would be quite different because of the uh, Electoral Act that's been, you know, put out. But... How do we now explain the Electoral Act and the delegate at this point? Well, the point is that the, the Electoral Act itself has become even more controversial than controversy. You know, if you see uh, what happened when the president signed the amendment uh, in 2022, Section 84, Subsection 12, we're still battling with it. I think the matter is still in court, even before the Supreme Court. So we are here to get settled with the issue of political appointees, whether they can participate in the process. Then the, the National Assembly members suddenly realized that they omitted a very important aspect in our electoral journey by excluding what they call statutory delegates, you know, comprising 
members of the legislative assembly and even the executive, including the president, is excluded from participating in the process. So they made that amendment and then sent it to the president for, the, for, for an assent. And up to now, the president has not actually assented. And the reasons he has given, they, they appear genuine anyway, but uh, at the same time, uh, he's, he's really causing a lot of confusion. What he's trying to say, with the present situation where you have only three delegates, three delegates, uh, I think, from each local government, uh, three ad hoc delegates from each local government, uh, and uh, you have this kind of money that is being spent. The money that is being spent is so much because uh, people are giving so much money to these delegates, you know, in order for them to emerge. And then you now add statutory delegates to the list. It then means that billions and billions will be spent by prospective candidates for them to actually emerge. And that, again, will really, really, you know, turn the political scene into, into trading, into trading, into buying and selling. And so he has withheld assent on that because he didn't want more of you know economic problem for those who are contesting. That is the reason why he has, according to me, has not assented to that particular decision. But what we are seeing with the delegates, with the, even the current delegates, the whole delegates, all of them have been given. In fact, I hear that yesterday I was coming back from Abuja. One of those who are in the inner circle of one of the main uh, major contender for the presidency told me that another candidate is packaging ten ten thousand dollars for each ad hoc delegate ten thousand dollars and i think his own candidate is trying to arrange maybe twenty thousand double that amount of money of course you are aware of the son of nama de sambo who has asked for a refund of two million naira he paid each to delegates and then they failed to vote for him it's accent so it has become a you know a, 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 a big commerce it's become a big in fact what is going on now is you know trading and almost all these delegates that are, I mean, all these uh, candidates that are consulting, in every state they consult with these delegates, they must give them money. They must also package money. In fact, one of the, one of the candidates is said not to be giving money, and then they told, they told somebody that the man is not serious. I don't know whether he's really contested. He's one of the presidential candidates. And somebody is saying that nobody has seen his money among the delegates. So it is, we are now in the era of trading. And that, again, imperils the entire process. The entire process is clearly, clearly in danger. If delegates are demanding outrightly money before they can actually vote, and that issue of competence, issue of competence is out of the question. Issue of those who can rescue Nigeria is out of the question. The more, more, what matters now is that you have more money, you then you eventually going to emerge as a as a candidate. And when you begin to have this money back, who have no bread, who come to govern the country and govern the state, we're in trouble. We're in trouble already. My take is that the entire system is already in peril. I'm not seeing any hope, honestly, from the look right. of things, you know. Right. There is no advancement in our in our political culture. There's none. All right. Uh, uh, Wendy Banu, you seem to be saying that uh, this, uh, some have described it as an inexplicable omission uh, of the statutory or super delegates um, in the 2022 electoral act as amended. Uh, you're saying it's uh, going to make things worse, or it is making things worse, as far as internal democracy in the parties are concerned. Um, uh, we we can recollect the uh, the words or the statement um, attributed to the special uh, the political advisor to uh, the president in the office of the vice president, uh, Senator Babafemi Otiru, who was quoted by a newspaper uh, saying to Niger State delegates that um, even someone as uh, righteous as uh, the Vice President, Emir Shiba Johumi, is a pastor in uh, one of the big churches in Nigeria, had offered to cater to the hotel accommodation and logistics of the delegates from Niger State. Of course, they took um, the whole day for the uh, media team of the Oshibajo campaign to come out and deny it, but uh, the paper had already put out the information. Um, what would you, how, what, what are your thoughts on the role of the Independent National Electoral Commission, who, you know, oversees the political parties and 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 also uh, observes the the primaries as far as this issue of internal democracy and um uh, financing or finances are concerned the, tr the truth of the matter is that uh, uh the independent uh, national electronic electoral uh, uh, commission uh, doesn't have the capacity to police the entire political process it doesn't have the capacity 
in any way, and I've said it several times. Uh, when a law is made and then you the, that law is observing breach most times in Nigeria, it doesn't help the system in any way. The INEC is not independent in the first place. INEC does not have the capacity to do anything. Even organizing free and fair election, you see what will happen even in 2023. And the problem stems from the fact of the aspiration of the political elites. INEC have always complained about it. I've also taken time in all my uh, interventions, you know, in, 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 in television and radio to say, look, despite the fact that we have actually amended the Electoral Act, despite the fact that there are some innovations that we have introduced, which is geared towards uh, having free, fair and credible election, there is one thing we have not dealt with. And as long as we have not addressed that fundamental issue, we may never, we may never as a, as a nation have free and fair election. Quote me. What am I saying? The desperation of politicians are too much. The, their desperations, you know, unimaginable. It's, it's a, I mean, you can't, you can't quantify it. And why is that desperation? It's because of what is available for them in the office, the pegs of office. It's too much because there are no checks and balances. The moment you become a governor, you're a billionaire. Even if it's only one week, you're going to be there. You're a multi-billionaire. The same thing with the president. The same thing with all the of, you know, uh, of his executive. Because of lack of checks and balances. And because we don't run a transparent system. And so what happened is that those who want to occupy political position know this fact that the moment you win election, you already are made for the rest of your life, generations born and unborn will become billionaire. So what they do is that they can do anything to get into that office. And so including breaching the law, including breaching the system, including manipulating the system, even as much as we have had this uh, 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 trans electronic, we're going to have what you call electronic trans transmission of results, you know, I can assure you that that electronic transmission of results will be interrupted. They're going to mess it up. We see what will happen during the election of 2023. Why? Because of the desperation of politicians. So as long as we have not addressed the issue of effects of office, what people, you know, are entitled to when they get into office, there is no proper definition. A governor comes in, he can put all his relations in all the five-star five -star hotel. At the expense of the state, nobody queries, nobody, you know, you know, uh, uh, approves that budget. He does whatever he does with the finance of the of the DC. Here, the, the accountant general of uh, River State now being wanted for for squandering four and something billion naira. You hear of accountant general of the federation that is accused of taking out of the system eighty billion without the system shaking, without without the system noticing it. Without the system, you can't take five thousand dollars out of the economy of America, or five, five or three thousand pounds out of the economy of, of Britain by the Prime Minister or by the President of America without the system noticing it and raising an alarm. But here, billions can be taken out without the system noticing it. So it is this inefficiency, inefficiency in checks and balances, you know, that makes politicians to be those so desperate. So INEC does not have the capacity to control how much you know is going to be spent, despite the fact that there has been a specific amount put in the in the electoral a, a candidate will spend. INEC does not have the capacity. INEC does not even have, have the capacity to organize free and fair election, credible election in the first place, let alone now monitoring the issue of finances of, of, of candidates. So that inability uh, you know, of INEC due to the fact that the expressions of politicians are so much now has rendered the entire thing comatose. And we're not making any progress. And as long as we have not addressed this fundamental issue of what is available to political office holders when they get into office, it creates desperation, and that desperation makes them to manipulate and then breach the system and make the system to be in a, ineffective. And, and at the end, we are back to square one. Despite the improvement we have done in our electoral law, we have not been able to advance further because of the fact that we have not addressed the fundamentals. Mm. So, um, um Dr. Mondu Bani, it's very obvious that, you know, these delegates are very critical to our democratic process, be it, you know, at the party level, because that's where it starts from, you know, uh, internal democracy and to the point where you have them electing whoever becomes a flag bearer 
But, you know, the money politics cannot be taken away. We have seen, uh, you know, according to reports that we have by certain Wosu, who said that a delegate had described Peter Obi as, you know, useless or something like that because he was sharing the agenda, uh, his plan, and rather not sharing money. Uh, but that's a conversation for another day. Do you think that um, the problem is in the process, the process of picking this delegate, who becomes a delegate? How did they become a delegate? Who are they answerable to? Do you think that if we're able to solve all of these problems, is there a tenure to becoming a delegate? At what point do they become delegates and how long do they stay delegates? Uh, do you think that if we solve all of this problem that we might just have you know, a solution to uh, solving the money back politics that we experience with the delegates? The point is that the system itself totally is corrupted. The entire system. The entire system, because the delegates emerge from, from the populace. I don't know how we're going to do it to get a new orientation, you know, and then get Nigerians properly reoriented, oriented as to what politics is all about, what governance is all about, how to fix a country, how nations fix their nations. We have yet to get the kind of, you know, uh, orientation that is very important for us to fix Nigeria. Because the delegates emerge from the from the populace, so what do we do to get everyone proper, you know, properly, or you know, uh, you know, with good orientation as to what we expect to do for this nation? That the nation is dying, and that nation is dying because of bad leadership. And the moment we don't get it right at the primary level, in the emergence of those who will contest the election, then we end up choosing the wrong people too. Because it is the wrong persons that have emerged at the primary level. The wrong delegates emerge. The wrong uh, primary candidates emerge. Then at the national election, the wrong people emerge, and then there's no way we can no move. So there is no, there is there this lack of patriotism all over. You imagine what you have just said. The candidate described uh, the Peter B as useless because he is showing agenda. He is showing what he can do to rescue Nigeria, but he's not showing money. So you can imagine the mentality. You can imagine how low we have gone as a nation. And don't be surprised that the person who made that statement may have may be a graduate, maybe somebody well educated. But the system is so corrupt. The system is so corrupted that it is only money, money, money that is the language, even for those who are educated, even for those who are comfortable, even for those who are comfortable, that all these super delegates are, you know, angling to be, to be, to be part of the entire process. They're all looking for money too. Don't be surprised that if the president signs the bill, even senators will be asking for, of course, the, the stake will be higher. You can't go and give a, a 200,000 or 250 dollars to a senator. You'll be talking about 10,000, 20,000 dollars for them, each, can, each, uh, each delegate. So the stakes will be higher. And that may be the reason why the president refused to accept, mm -hmm. in order not to increase the burden of uh, candidates. So I'm saying that we're, we're in a very big, I don't know how we're going to get out of this problem. I don't even have the solution myself. But, but, but Dr. Except Dr. Bali, you, you have, Dr. Dr. Bali, you have. The, 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 the place yeah. of office that the perks of office actually increase, increase the desperation. And that is the truth. The moment we don't deal with what these guys are entitled to when they get into office. Imagine governors, when they come in, they, they take up to one point something billion out of the system on, a, on, 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 on the ground of what you call security vote. And the system does not change. The system does not cry. Uh, do, do, Dr. Bani, but Dr. Bani, you, ha you have to give us a, a solution. One point something billion. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, you, I mean, we need we need solutions, sir. Are you saying that it's a... It's, uh, um, it, it's 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 uh, a hopeless situation for Nigeria, especially ahead of the 2023 elections. You know that that Nigerians can do nothing, and we are just um, going to be at the mercy of delegates and the kind of political system that you are talking about. Is is it a hopeless situation for? But there for, there, for there must be a new spirit, and I need to see that spirit. The spirit of uh, SARS, the anti the the, the SARS uh, 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 people that you know came out and say enough of this nonsense that is going on in the system. We must stop police brutality, and they were ready to 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 shut down the country. The kind of spirit of uh, of that particular fuel fuel crisis under Jonathan regime, where people gathered at at Ojota and say enough of what is going on in the country. And that's that's the, the kind of spirit where that spirit comes around, and then God allowed that spirit to dwell in every Nigerian, and Nigeria now begin to look out for the best, and not where anyone comes from. The kind of spirit that made Soludo to emerge in Anambra State. That is the kind of spirit all of us should be looking at for now in the country, where somebody now says, no, we cannot continue like this. 
looking at the presidential candidate. This is the man that can rescue Nigeria, and we're going for him. Even if he goes and joins a small political party that have no structure, all Nigerians will queue you, queue up in that political party and say, this is the person that can change Nigeria. It is only that kind of a spirit that can change Nigeria. All right. If we don't have it, I don't know where it's going to come from heaven. I don't know where it's going to come from. That spirit you know, dwells on every electorate, and they say enough is enough. We cannot continue with the kind of bad leadership that have held this country hostage. All right. We must now right. change our... If it's a cost, we are ready to break that cost. Thank you very and much. I don't know when that spirit will come. The spirit of NSAS. That is right. the spirit I'm talking about. Thank the you very much, Do Dr. Dr. Bani. You know, increase fuel. Yes, and we, we, we have to wrap, wrap it, it up. It is that spirit I'm looking out for. I don't know whether that spirit can come in 2022 All or right. in 2023. Thank you. Thank it's you, Dr. Bani. We, we, we have to go. Changes. We have to go. Without that spirit, without that spirit, we end up also electing wrong persons, and they keep retarding the growth of Good Nigeria. Dr. Bani, sorry to interrupt, but we have to go. You're saying the answer spirit is what Nigerians need um, to, that, to that, make that things better. That is the only spirit. spirit. It's the spirit of no, no, not again. Not, you know I mean? We cannot accept this All right. again. Thank you. We Thank you, sir. We can't accept it. Thank you, you know, very that much. That is the only spirit, you know. But I'm yet to see it even on this, with the, with the, with the new setup, how things are going. With the new setup, with the new All right, uh, Dr. Obadi, we are out of time. We are out of time, so we have to pull the plugs at this point. We, we have These to go. These are the same set of people who have held this country down. But because of their, mon their money back, see what is going on. They ask, you know, I'm not seeing any hope. Thank you, thank but you, sir. We, we, ha we have to go. I, I don't know if you can hear me, sir. Election, but we, we have to pull the plugs at this point. Upon electorate and Nigeria. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm sincere, as we sincerely apologize for the back and forth. Uh, probably uh, Dr. Bani could not hear me uh, well, um, but uh, he's given his candid view on the issue of the politics of party primaries and delegates. He says that Nigerians need to re-invoke the answer spirit. Dr. Mondo Bani is a political analyst. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Thank Good morning. Much. Thank you very much. Well, that's the size of it this morning. Uh, not entirely. We'll definitely take a break. When we return, we'll look at our second conversation. Please stay with us.